Hi, I'm Patrick, and I'm part of the Get Rap worship team. We're so excited that you decided to join us today. And we want to hear about all of the amazing things that God is doing in your life. Go to mygwcstory at gmail.com and tell us about your testimony and all the things that God is doing. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to bless the ministry, go and download our free Get Rap TV app and choose whatever giving option is best for you. We're so excited that you're here. Enjoy the message. Hey, how's it going, Get Rap Church? Man, I am so excited this Sunday morning because guess what? I got seven more days. Next Sunday, I'll be with you guys. But today, boy, do we have a treat for you. Here at Get Rap Church, we believe in equipping the body and, you know, letting those people that are called to do ministry do ministry. So today, we have youth pastor, pastors, ministers, that are going to preach to you the Word of God. This is going to be on fire. Calientissimo. Woo! Good morning, guys. How are y'all doing this morning? Amen. It is so good to be here with you guys. I just want to start off by this morning by honoring the pastors of the house. Amen? Amen. Pastor Juan and Pastor Ruthie have been a huge driving force um, in our life and in our family's life through all the trials and tribulations that we have been through. Um, and so we just want to honor you guys this morning and thank you for everything that you do. And I am also going to open up in prayer. Father, I just thank you right now for this group of people. Father God, I thank you for every single person in this room under the sound of my voice. Holy Ghost, I ask that you just have your way in this place right now. I thank you that seeds are going to be deposited in the hearts of the people. The people are not going to leave here the same again, that there's going to be a paradigm shift that is going to take place in this atmosphere in the name of Jesus this morning. And I thank you for it, and I call it done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It is so good to be here with you all this morning. I'm going to share some of my heart with you guys today, and I am going to start in James chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. Um, Consider it nothing but joy, my brothers and sisters. Nothing but joy. Whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to a spiritual maturity. Y'all hear that? Spiritual maturity and an inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result in and through a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed. Hear that? completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. I am here to talk to you guys today about the miracle that is in your trial. The trials that you are facing this morning is your miracle. Have you ever thought about that before? That the very thing that you could be facing right now, that trial, that valley of cancer, that doctor's report that you have been given that you don't have much time to live, Maybe you're in the valley of divorce this morning, and there's been told that there's no hope and you have given up. Or possibly you're in here and you're in that valley of secrecy, that you have a secret and an addiction and a stronghold in your life that is so strong, and it is so hidden right now inside of your heart that because of you're afraid to go to your brother and sister in Christ or your... Um, you just don't want to go to somebody, that you're allowing that to keep you in your valley. That is a trial that you are going through this morning. And I'm here to tell you that there is a miracle in that trial. Amen? The trial that you are in could be the biggest miracle that builds your maturity, your character, your humility, and developing your faith and your trust in the Lord. If you are not careful, too much focus on your problem and you are going to miss the process and the promises through your process. If you're focusing on your problem, you're going to miss the promises that God has through that process of that trial that is going to bring about a miracle in your life. Do you hear me? So I'm going to give you guys an example. Um, in 2016, our son was diagnosed with brain cancer. Um, he was seven years old. And I'm here to tell you guys that that was a trial. And how many of you guys know that when you hear that your seven-year-old son has brain cancer, that going back to James chapter 1, when the Lord says, consider it all joy. Do you really think that for a moment that me and my husband were like, praise the Lord, our son has cancer? No. There was a moment. 
moment of doubting, and I, I, I realized in that moment that everything that I was speaking up into that point in my maturity and my walk with the Lord was not, my, my voice was not aligned with my spirit. So sometimes it's in the midst of a trial that you realize if your heart is really in alignment and your spirit with what's coming out of your mouth. And so when he was diagnosed with cancer, fast forward, our son had a brain surgery, brain radiation, spinal and brain for seven weeks. He endured intense chemotherapy. We were told going into surgery that he may never come out, walk, or talk again, and he would be in a wheelchair for the rest of his life, and he would be mute because of how they have to go in and that they would not, he might not talk ever again. And so fast forward to that. During a chemotherapy, there was one particular day we were in the room. The nurse comes in and pushes the chemo, and my son went into anaphylactic shock. He was dying in front of my eyes. His eyes rolled in the back of his head. His mouth was foaming. He was shaking. His throat was closing up. They hit the code wall, and all these doctors rush in the room, and they are literally trying to save my son. He was dying in front of my eyes, and the Lord spoke to me. Instantly, I had peace, and he spoke to me, and he says, Megan, you still don't trust me. You still don't trust me. And in that moment, I realized that there was promises through that process. That my son dying in front of me, that was a miracle. Because of what happened in my life in that room that day, me and my family, my ministry, where God has placed me with the spiritual maturity that's in my life, I would not be where I am had I not gone through that trial and through the process and realized that the Lord has promises for me in the mix of my trial. Christ himself encountered many trials, yet his life was full of miracles. Even in death, guys, even in death, even when things do not turn out how you want them in your natural mind, God is bigger, and he has a plan, and he is working on your behalf. So yes, you may have to bury that loved one, but I'm telling you, praise him, because there's still a promise. We may not always understand the ways of God, but I want you guys to take this away with you today. Always remember that God does not change. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. You must trust in God's character because he is a good God through your trial. Amen? And remember that there is a miracle through your trial and through your process. And I just want to encourage you guys with that today. Amen? Thank you for allowing me to share with you. That was phenomenal. I'm encouraged. I'm pumped up. I'm ready to go right now. Is anybody else pumped up in the building? Wow, such an incredible testimony. I want to take this time to make sure I thank Pastor Juan and Pastor Ruth. I want to honor you guys. Thank you for giving us this opportunity to be up here. I'm excited and pumped. I'm going to go ahead and jump right into the message. So the title of my message, I was praying about it. I was trying to figure out what exactly, where to go. And, you know, I was actually, I guess the Lord spoke to me through a worship service. And what I was told was the message was called, whatever it takes. So say that with me. Say, whatever it takes. Whatever. Come on, say that with, with some conviction. Say, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. Amen. So I want to speak from a scripture in the Bible. Mark chapter 5, verse 25. You, I'm not going to have time to put it up there and be all fancy. Not today, but we're going to go ahead and move forward, right? So in this scripture, it talks about a woman with the issue of blood. Some of you may have heard of this scripture before, but I want to go into some more details when it comes to this scripture. She's seen physicians, she's tried different solutions, but yet she's not able to find it. All the experts tell her the same thing. Hey, it's just not going to work out. It just seems to be something you have to deal with. You understand what I'm saying to you? Now, some scholars believe in that time in her society that she was viewed as an outcast, someone who was unclean, someone who should not be associated with. Now, I want you to realize something else, too, is that she was bleeding from the inside out. She had some internal issues that were starting to come out. I'm not sure about you and what's going on in your life, but maybe you have some internal issues that are going on inside of you, and they're starting to bleed out of you. And you've seen all the experts. You've tried everything, and it just seems like it's not working. But I'm encouraging you today to do whatever it takes to get to that one option that's going to get you your salvation, that's going to heal you. So this woman 
being known as an outcast, being known as somebody who should not be associated with, who was humiliated already by her society, knew that Jesus was around the corner, not just around the corner, but surrounded by a multitude. And when he was surrounded by a multitude, he knew that they would, she knew that they would think of her in a certain way. But she said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. I'm sick and tired of being in the same place that I've already been all my life. I need to try everything. I need to try out this Jesus. I heard he's in the healing business. And if you don't know that already now, he's still in the healing business. Amen. Does anybody believe that in this place? Amen. So she begins to push to the crowd. She doesn't care about the thoughts. She doesn't care about the opinion. She doesn't care about what people think about her. She decides to say, I don't care if I touch just a piece of his garment, which is what the word says. She received her healing through that. And the word says that it was her faith that made her well it was her faith that fueled her it was her faith that was the catalyst that allowed her to receive her healing so i encourage you this morning to strengthen up your faith to do what you're not used to doing anymore if it means you got to get on your face in the middle of work we'll do that listen muslims are doing it so why can't we do it as well why are we new doing it at home amen and so i also want to encourage you with a personal testimony there was a moment and once again don't judge me i was a young person all right at the time so I was traveling to, okay, okay, well, I still am young, amen. So it happened yesterday. No, I'm kidding, no. So it happened a few years ago. I was on a mission trip. Mariana actually was able to go with me on this mission trip. And I'm flying from Houston to Miami. And it was great. It was awesome. I've never flown in my life before. I was, I was freaking out, right? And then we eventually get to the connecting flight in Miami. And then from Miami, we're going to Brazil. And I'm like, all right, let's go. And, and by the way, the miracle of that is also that Mariana's mom, she ended up stepping, up, stepping in and paying for my whole trip. So it was amazing. So I want to honor her for that as well, for sure. Um, and so someone had already paid for it. So I'm at Miami and, you know, I'm feeling great. It's time to board. My passport's missing. I'm freaking out. I'm like, why would this happen right now when the, when the, the plane is boarding? So I'm freaking out. I don't know what to do. And eventually, um, I call one of the pastors who's over the, the mission trip, and he says, you need to call the security. You need to talk to them and say, hey, shut down this whole airport. My passport is missing. I'm like, you're crazy. They're not going to listen to me. I'm some 70-year-old kid who doesn't know anything who just lost his passport. You think they're going to listen to me? He said, do it. I said, all right. And while I was looking for my passport, which I couldn't find, I still felt the Lord tell me, just praise me. Just praise me. It doesn't seem logical, but just keep praising me. Keep praising me. And I was like, I guess so. So I just came. I just kept singing. I kept praising. I said, I praise you, God. I, I honor you, God. I, I worship you, God. I know that you're going to do something right now, God. I don't know what it looks like. And so I told the security manager, and they ended up literally, and I guess I, I said a record or something, but they shut the whole, the whole airport down, and they said, I don't know what they said. It was just a lot of her, her, her. And so... <laughs> But it sounded very serious, right? And so eventually, it was serious because what they ended up doing is they ended up finding my passport and giving it to me. Here's the thing. I did something that I was not used to doing, and I was able to receive my identity back, who I used to be, who God called me to be. And here's the other thing I want you to catch real quick. Someone paid for my trip, for my destiny, for my destination. Jesus paid for your trip, for your destination. He also wants you to realize that I'm willing to do whatever. If you would just do whatever it takes, I will restore your identity. I will restore your purpose and your value and your promise the bible says in philippians 1 6 when god starts a work in you he is faithful to complete it i encourage you this morning and i want you to know god is not done with you god is just getting started with you and i encourage you this morning also to do whatever it takes get out of your comfort zone if you want to see the miraculous you have to see, you have to do the ridiculous amen amen thank y'all so much Come on, let's give another round of applause to Gabriel. That was awesome. I want to go ahead and also honor my pastors, Pastor Juan and Pastor Ruthie, for this opportunity to be able to preach the gospel to y'all. Um, the title of my message is, when everything is going bad, keep declaring that God is good. God gave me Psalm uh, chapter 27, verse 13. King David said, in the midst of all, everybody surrounding him, in the midst of things going wrong, attack after attack after attack, he said, what would have become of me if I had not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? 
See, we are the land of the living because we are the ones that are living in Christ Jesus. We are alive in Christ Jesus. And so he stood on God's goodness. He meditated on God's goodness. Another translation says, I am certain that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. See, he knew that God was good. He knew that in the midst of whatever he was going through, he kept his eye on God's goodness. He kept his eye on God's faithfulness. He kept his eye on God's promises. And many times the enemy wants to help help us look at the things that are going wrong in our lives. But God wants you to know that he wants you to believe and declare in his goodness. Keep declaring in his faithfulness. Job, in the midst of losing his cattle, in the midst of getting a disease, in the midst of losing his children, in the midst of losing his servants, he said, in his word, he said in the word, the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. But blessed be the name of the Lord. What was he saying? He was saying God is still good no matter what. And in, and in verse, in chapter 42, he said, my eyes have seen you. No, he said, my ears have seen you, but now my eyes have seen you. He says, so I repent from dust to ashes. Why? Because he understood that when he found himself complaining, he understood that he didn't understand all of God's ways, but that now he knew God. See, there's something about when we go through trials, when we go through tribulations, that we don't, that now we, we knew of God, but now we know God. And now nothing can shake us. Nothing can trip us up. No one can, can can convince us that there is no God because we know that God is alive in our situation you see it was the goodness of God that took Joseph out of prison whenever the cupbearer forgot about him and it's the goodness of God that's going to take some of you out of your own prison it's the goodness of God that made Abraham into a somebody when he was a nobody. And it's the goodness of God that's going to make you into a somebody. Although other people have said that you are a nobody. You see, it was the goodness of God that turned Moses, a fugitive, into someone that had a purpose. And God has a purpose. God has a plan for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, God says he has a good plan, a good plan for you not a bad plan he has a good plan for you his plan is to prosper you to give you hope and to give you a future it was the goodness of God that took a prostitute like Rahab and put her into the lineage of Jesus Christ it is the goodness of God that no matter what pit you find yourself in God wants to bring you back home today it is the goodness of God that took an orphan like Esther and made her into a queen. See, we're no longer orphans. And some of us are walking around with that orphan spirit. We're acting like we don't have a father. When God says that we have a father, when God says that he takes care of you, that you are his, that he bought you with a prize, and you are kings, and you are queens in this house. God took someone like Hannah and breathed life into her. When she was lifeless, when she had, everybody said that she was barren. Everybody says that she couldn't produce anything. And today, God breathes life into you by the word. He breathes life into you. And he says, you will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Glory to his name. Jesus. See, it was the goodness of God that took David when he was in a low place, when he was in the caves, when he was in the graves, when people wanted to take him out, it was the goodness of God that took him to high places. And some of you have gone through some pits, you've gone through some valleys, you've gone through some situations where people have said that you'll be a nobody. But you know what? God wants to remind you today that you are somebody through his blood and that he's also going to take you to high places in him. And it was the goodness of God that met Elijah whenever he was down and out, when he no, one, no, no more wanted to do ministry. No more wanted to do anything. It was the ravens that he sent to, to, to go there and to feed him. And today, some of you are weary. Some of you are tired. Some of you are saying, one last time, God, I'm coming here today. Let me hear one word from you because I'm tired or I'm going to walk away. And God says, I'm here today and I've sent my ravens to come and to feed you my word. I've 
come and I've sent my ravens to come and to breathe life into you. I've come because you will live. You will live. You see, it's, it's, it's like a cake. It tastes nasty when the ingredients are by themselves. But once you mix those ingredients together, oh, Romans 8, 28, that God causes all things, and I mean all things. I don't care what you're going through, the good, the bad, and the ugly. God causes all things. He puts it in the, the mixer of his goodness, and he causes them to work together for our good and for his glory. Your ladder will be greater than your beginning. Praise God for his goodness today. Praise God because he's faithful. Praise God because he's still the God of wonder, working, miracle, power. He's still the way maker. He's still the promise keeper. He's still the, the one that makes a way out of no way. God bless y'all. Hey Amen. How are you guys doing? You guys enjoying this so far? Where's my Get Rap students at? All right. Listen, I may only have a few minutes this morning, but I'm on an assignment, amen? God has sent me all the way from Conroe, Texas. That's not too far, but look, on an assignment today. So I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Stir, it up. stir it up. And do this with me. So, so anytime you see me out there telling the worship team of the pastor, <laughs> And that means to stir it up. Amen. And so this morning, have you guys ever been to the gym and you guys see that big fan? That's like, you guys seen it? It's called a big fan, you know? All right. Well, that's me today. And I'm here to just fan your flame today. Amen. And so come on. Come on. So listen, I want to open up with this. If I took a billionaire, okay, that's all of you guys. Amen. You receive that? If I took a billionaire. Who, hey, man, stir it up. Come on. Who lives in a mansion and I put him in the projects, is he still a billionaire? Yes. Wait, what? Yes. So you're telling me, come on, follow me. I need somebody at Get Rap Church to catch this this morning. So you're telling me that his environment doesn't dictate his identity. Yes. Come on. So, so the first thing I want you guys to take away from this message this morning is your environment doesn't dictate who God created you to be. Amen. Come on. <laughs> I'll fire myself up today. Come on, guys. All right. <laughs> Man, we give all the reasons why our environment says that we're worthless. You know, like people, like we had a, a student a few years back that carved in her arm right here, worthless, because she believed the lie. Amen? She believed the lie in her life. And I wonder how many of us are sitting in this room right here believing that same lie, that we can't be used, that God is done with us. Man, we've done messed up. Amen? Man, I wonder, uh, you know, how many of us are just staying stagnant? We're just complacent. We're just going through the motions. Come on, somebody, I'm here to stir it up, people. All right? I, I keep wanting to say young people because I'm used to talking to students, but you guys are young people. Amen? Awesome. Awesome. And one thing that God has shown me about, about the body is that a lot of us, if we're honest, and, I'm, and I was looking at myself when I was talking to God, and he said, we are spiritually dehydrated. I mean, can you imagine, like, the first thing we do when they go to the hospital, you know, if you're taking rush to the ER, they hook you up to an IV to what? Hydrate you, right? To make sure you're not, you know, dehydrating. And so some of us, man, like I said earlier, we're going through the motions, and we're just going, man, man, oof. We can't even lift up our hands in worship anymore, amen? Like, like we got to have a heart check. Man, I was, God was just messing me up, and I'm just, I'm just here to, glad I could share that, man, I'm going to be transparent with you guys. Um, I don't know how many of you guys can relate with me, but a few, uh, just very recent, man, the enemy took the battle to every single area of my life. Every single, I mean, my workplace, I mean, my relationships, right? Just everywhere. I'm like, God, there is not one real safe place that I can go to, you know, except in my closet. And amen. How many of you guys know that's sometimes the best place you can be? Amen. That's sometimes the best place you can be, you know. And so, you know, there are moments where I just felt like giving up. Like, I, I just felt like giving up. I even shared with Pastor Gabriel up here. Man, I just sometimes feel like giving up. I, this week, I almost walked away from it all saying, God, like, I don't know. Are you sure you chose me? Amen. I wear this shirt. I come to the services. I lift my hands of worship. But are you sure it's me, God? And he says, yes. 
He says yes, and I'm here to tell somebody, look, I may be just flesh and bones, right? But because he lives in me, he calls me from death to life. Look, Jesus has resurrection power. He can speak into those dead areas of your life, right? And make them live once again. So I don't know who needs to hear that today. Maybe your dreams, right? Or maybe you have, uh, you're a business owner on the inside, right? That God has created and designed you to be. And today, I'm just here to speak life into that dream, into that vision that God has. Look, don't walk out of these doors the same person. Don't walk out of these things. Like, you know, that was a good service. Amen. Look, it, the beauty of this is not that we gather. It's that it scatters. Amen. Look, anytime there's an opportunity to give up, there's an opportunity to go up. Amen. And that's from our very own Pastor Juan a few messages ago called Giving Up. It was so good. And the guy just kind of brought me back. Look, I need somebody. Somebody, I believe that somebody in here is about to receive their breakthrough. Amen. Somebody is about to get a phone call and, and receive their miracle. So whether you, you, you eat on this, you chew on this today, I mean, that's, that's your key. Amen. So the other thing is... Um, Man, one thing God really showed me is that we need the super to meet the natural. Like, we can go through all, all everything, right? But, man, we, we've really become a culture that drinks that sipping on Christianity light. You guys know what light products are, right? We love them. We see them everywhere. We're like, let me get this salad dressing light, right? Ranch light. Or, you know, <laughs> you know I'm trying to watch my figure, you know? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Uh, we don't drink Coke anymore. We drink Coke zero, like zero sugars, no calories. It's good. It's healthy, bro. <laughs> you know? But look, whew, that's, that's what we do with our relationship with God, right? After drinking Christianity light, we look nothing like God, nothing like him. And again, what am I doing this morning? Stirring it up. Come on, people. <laughs> Uh, we look nothing like him, man. We don't pray like we used to. We're too busy to spend time with God. God, I'm, I'm just, you know, hustling, man. And, and I just don't have time anymore, you know? And, and we, like I said, man, we can't even worship God like we used to. We used to be at the altar singing and dancing and giving him every single thing, right? And we don't do that anymore. And man, like, like and you said it best, bro. Sometimes we have to do the ridiculous to, to see the miraculous. Amen. Look, I don't know about you, but I was tired. I got to a point recently where I was tired of doing the whole Christian light thing. Like I wanted everything that God has in store for me. And I heard this word and it's, it's scriptural, you know, but I just want you guys to know, like, is, do you believe that God is everything that he said he is? And if that's, let me ask you the next question. Do you believe that everything that he said about your life is true. Like, let's be real here. Let's take off the mask. Let's take off the facade. Let's take off our coats today and just say, man, like the bomb is not going to detonate from what's on the outside, but it's on what's on the inside that affects the outside. You see what I'm saying? So if somebody can catch this on the inside today, your whole atmosphere, your whole environment can change right here, right now. Amen. Look. I'm going to end with this. We, uh, we have, we've been having some incredible uh, services at Get Rap Students. Amen. We just had a worship night. And you know what? The only thing that has really changed is I said, team, students, we've got to get together and we've got to pray and pray like we've never prayed before. So just prayer really has transformed the youth ministry of Get Rap Church. And it's an honor to just be a part. Listen, I love you guys. I hope I can... Stirred up today, all right? Hey, Amen. Give Pastor Mark a hand. Hey, Amen. Good morning, Get Rev. How you doing? Woo, my nerves, y'all. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. How many remember the movie Transformers? I love that movie because they always, when the shift happened, they always transform into something greater. Romans 12 and 2 says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Tell somebody to change your mindset. Tell somebody to change your perspective. Hallelujah. Wrong perception is a weapon the enemy uses in our life. We tend to make our decisions based on how we perceive the world around us. And let's be honest, social media don't make it no better. So if we're living in a life with a jacked up perception, guess what? Our little worlds are jacked up, right? Tell somebody else to change your mindset. 
Hallelujah. What will happen when the church and the community change their mindset? When we get on one accord, when our family members, our marriages, when our children and our family change our mindset, what will happen when we don't freak out, when we don't panic at the drop of a dime? Would it be something changed, something beautiful? Tell somebody to change your mind. Hallelujah. Paul explained it well that in Ephesians 6 and 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. That lets me know that I'm not exempt from going through issues. That lets me know that I'm going to go through something. And in this life, God has already showed the prophecy when he sent his son how to suffer, that we will suffer. And then we will, how to suffer because he didn't say a mumbling word. So he's already taught you how to go through your your, your trials and your tribulations no one is exempt for we are all going to go through something all God wants to know is how will you handle it that's the question because if you begin to handle it the way that he wants you to he's going to say okay well done you don't have to go through that test anymore you won't be homeless no more because you passed that test you now I can elevate you to get your husband because you passed that test now I can elevate you to be um, in, in, in this call in this govern or with this title because you have passed the test I want to hear God say, well done, well done. Sometimes devastation brings elevation. Some storms are necessary and a part of your growth. Tell somebody, don't give up. Stop magnifying your problems and start magnifying your God. Hallelujah. On this road, there will be roadblocks. There will be stop signs. I don't know about you, but when I drive down the road, if it's not a stop sign, there will be total chaos. So if you're driving on the road and you see stop signs, you see rivers, you see rainbows, you see storms, you see pain, it's there for a reason. It's all necessary. Tell somebody to grow up. Hallelujah. Some people love to live in chaos. Do you know any of those people? And they love misery. They're always on Facebook putting, well, I'm in the hospital, I'm laid up. And then Sister Watermelon will get mad because if you don't come visit her, she might leave the church. But if she changed her mindset, hallelujah, and we get on one accord, and we grow up with spiritual maturity, how will the church be different? Tell somebody to change your mindset. When your mindset change, your association change. Your circle go from a circle to a triangle, from a triangle to an angle. And my angle right now ain't even 90 degrees. I was just telling my husband that, boy, I don't have a circle no more. Praise God. That's because God wants you alone. He wants you on your face. He bring those problems. He bring those issues so you can come back to him and run back to him. And stop entertaining spiritual vampires. You know the people that come around you to suck the life out of you because they see what's on your life. They see the anointing on you, so they just want to be around. Some of you single women are entertaining a vampire right now in your house and he ain't your husband. Get him out. Hallelujah. They probably throw me out, but I, I'll probably get talked about. I will. Stop treating God like he's a magic eight ball. You remember them eight balls we shook up? Am I going to be married? Yes. Am I going to have children? It'll say yes, because that ain't even right. You know, it's just something. And put him back on the wall until another problem comes and then you bring it back out. As if he's Santa Claus or a decoration that you bring out. Romans 12 and 1. A lot of people don't want to grow up. Some people love misery and they don't want to surrender to the Lordship of Christ. They don't want to do Romans 12 and 1. Submit your body wholly as a living sacrifice. Hallelujah. Accept what God's allowed. Tell somebody to accept what God allows. Yeah. Hallelujah. And in my closing, I do want to honor my pastors. I thank you and I don't take this lightly. I just want to say real quick, there, and I hope I say it right, if you, some of you can remember this saying, this, this um, little joke, it says, there was a captain, he was on a ship, and he had a, uh, a team and everything with him, and the assistant came and said, Captain, Captain, there are some pirates coming, and they're coming to fight us. He said, oh, go get my red coat. Bring my red coat, I'll put it up, they go to fight, ta da 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 They win. He come back, he say, Captain, why every time you get your red coat out, he, you know, you put it on, and, 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 and we go to war, why you always want to wear the red coat? He said, well, because when I wear the red coat, I can't, if I get hit or if I get stabbed, 
It won't cause distractions to you guys, and you'll stop fighting because you see me hurt, but you'll keep fighting because the red coat will, you, it will camouflage the blood. So he said, okay, later on that day, the, um, um, the assistant came back, he said, Captain, Captain, there are about 12 more ships coming with pirates. Oh my God, and it's just us. Captain said, oh God, go get my brown pants. Some of y'all will get it with your home. Somebody say, come on, Pastor. <laughs> hear me. I got seven minutes, but hear me. Come on, Pastor. <laughs> Write this day down real quick. <laughs> Woo! You guys okay? <laughs> so everybody's just running and gunning up here, and I wanted to take a little bit of time. I only have seven minutes to discuss a couple of things with you. Uh, Pastor, thank you for the honor of going last. Uh, <laughs> I'm serious, I'm serious. It, it is an honor because I get to put the exclamation point on what thus saith the Lord today. Uh, I may not shout at you, I didn't come to shout at you, but hey, you know what, I may if I start preaching good. <laughs> I'm trying to get my little bookmark here. So, whew, man, there's some good words coming up in here. Thank you, Lord, that Get Rap Church is a, is a church of maturity, is a church of word. This before you, and I, I may not even get to this, because I need you to understand something. This in front of you is evidence of the seed of that man sitting in the back of the room. Come on, your pastor doesn't see people as their function. Your pastor doesn't see just a worship leader or just a team lead or just an usher. Your pastor sees deep. And I don't know what you're doing here. I don't know if this is your first time here, but if it is, oh my God. <laughs> I am so glad. Welcome home. Welcome to a place where what God has put inside of you gets to step out. Come on, Pastor. That's a kind of a joke that I that I say to Raquel. Uh, is, is she'll say she'll come to me and she'll say, Pastor Patrick, you know this, that, the other, and I tell her, Well, I don't know, Pastor. What does the word say? Because, see, I'm not speaking to her function. Because the man that pours into me doesn't speak into my function. He speaks to my spirit. He speaks. He sees the, the, the beacon of light that God has called me to be, and that's what he speaks to. So even when I mess up and I go, Pastor, I don't know what to do. Well, what, what does the word say? He sees, he sees deeper, guys. He sees deeper. Man, I, I hope you guys are catching this. I hope you're really understanding what you're seeing here. Because it's so much deeper than six people for seven minutes. Everything that, that every single one of these people touched on. There's a miracle in your mess. Right? Do something. When everything's going wrong, start declaring the goodness of God. Your environment doesn't, doesn't dictate your identity. And I'm not even going to try. <laughs> But there's one thing that every single one of these, these, these messages, there's one thing that all of these things have in common. So you can understand. You can change your mind. You can, you can even change your direction. But there's one thing that it requires, and that is a response. We can sit here, and we can amen all day long, and we can go back out that door, and we can sit in our mess. But today, God is saying, will you respond? So what does that look like? 
I certainly can't read it. Exodus 17, 1 through 6. It's the story of Moses. He's taking the, the children of Israel. He took his staff and he, boom, he hit the Nile and it turned to blood. And then he's on their exodus and he reached it. The Lord instructed him to take his staff and stretch it over the waters. And God, he split the waters. And they walked on dry land for 12 days until they were all saved. They get to this place and the Israelites are saying, they're grumbling against uh, uh, Moses. And they're saying, Moses, well, no, let me rewind. They're saying, Pastor, why would you ask me to read this book? They're saying, Pastor, don't you know that I don't have enough time? They're grumbling. They're complaining. I didn't write this. Don't be mad at me. I didn't write this. And so Moses goes before God, and, and God says, I want you to strike the rock. Go out to the rock, strike it, and there'll be water. They were thirsty. They didn't have any water. So, so Moses did that. Forty years later, they're thirsty again. And they're madder than ever. And they're grumbling against Moses and Aaron. And this time, they go into the, to the uh, a tabernacle of meeting. They go into the tabernacle, into God's holy place. And God himself, in his glory, showed himself before Moses and Aaron and said, Moses, speak to the rock. So Moses, this frustrated pastor, has been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years. And he says, do you really have to test God by now? So he takes his stick, his staff, that God has used all this time. Listen to me. If God uses a stick, why are you still stuck? So Moses takes this stick and he strikes the rock twice. But that's not what God instructed him to do. God provided water for the Israelites. But Moses and an entire generation were denied access to the promised land. What is the response? The response is a simple act of obedience. A simple act of obedience. Some of us are in the worst financial trouble we've ever been in. And we can't afford to tithe. Some of us need peace in our life. But instead of going to God, we're going to the water cooler. Or we're going to happy hour. Look, I'm just talking real here, guys. Because we can hoop and holler and shout about all this. But until we understand that it takes a, a response. It takes an act of obedience. Thank you again for watching this message. We want to make sure that we stay connected with you and you stay connected with us. So make sure you check us out on social media. Make sure you go to our website, www.getwrapped.tv. Don't forget to share this message. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.